Welcome to Siren Sester for the 2016 Touch Tennis Sangyang Masters. Philip Reynolds was running the tournament, so he was the man in the know. This is the third year we've been doing it now. Um, 44 players this year, which is fantastic. We've got the current and ex-world number one, so we're interested to see if they get through to the final. We've also got Sangyong Cars here as sponsored the prize money, obviously Fitbit. We've got some grass courts down here, we've got a charity barbecue today. And yeah, looking forward to a fantastic day. The event looks fantastic, we're secluded by nature, there's lots of people here. Um, we're trying out new court surfaces, which is quite exciting. Yours. The top touch tennis players are now used to their place in the spotlight. And this is partially down to the photography skills of Gareth Richmond, which we consistently see on social media following events. Well, first of all, I prefer being behind the camera than, <laughs> than in front of it. Uh, tennis is something that I love. Touch tennis is something that I've fallen in love with even more and got addicted to. I know the game, I know the players, uh, I know my way around the court, and it helps me get great shots. The best match of the early rounds saw a mammoth contest between Simon Roberts and Elliot Seabrook which included this astonishing rally. The long rally soon attracted a bit of a crowd, which the two players definitely noticed. Yeah, I thought everyone was enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apart from when the ball came on our court and it was waiting for it back. There were a few groans there, but other than that, I think the crowd liked the long battle. A long battle it certainly was. And eventually it was the former number one, Roberts, who sealed victory with the turning point. This stunning passing shot. Pushed me right to the end. <laughs> we're very right to the end, so we could have gone either way. When you make an error against Simon, it just plays on your mind because you know you're not going to get that point back too easily. So yeah, yeah, too good. Bit of a machine. Onlooker Elliot Mould gave his thoughts on the potential heavyweight clash that looped large. If we both get to the final, I think it's going to be a good match. I'm looking forward to it because, like you said, we haven't played in a while. Um, I've only beaten him once. Uh, the first time we played, had a couple of match points and cramped. That's, that's going to be the issue, whether I can go five sets, really. I know I can, tennis-wise, I can compete with him. It's just physically, can I stay there for a long period of time? But I'm really looking forward to it, like the challenge. He then sealed his place in the semi-finals, defeating a plucky Matt Gollage. Adam Hassan had hoped to join Mould there as he took on Stuart Sell, but an unexpected ankle injury put pay to his chances in this contest and he was disappointedly forced to withdraw from the tournament. Well, it's a bit unfortunate to, to get through like that, but um, I've never played against Hassan before and unfortunately he twisted his ankle, so he had to stop uh, halfway through the second set. So he busted his ankle sort of towards the end of the first set, but still managed to win that one. So I couldn't quite take advantage of it as soon as he did it, but then as it got worse in the second, he just had to stop. Which is uh, not never a nice way to win, but it obviously feels good to be in the semis. Sell so would play one of these two next in the semi-finals. So this is Cy Roberts down this end and Chris Bint down the other end. And I think, uh, I think it's fairly early on. Last I heard it was 2-1 to Roberts in the first set, so I'm not sure what it's progressed to since then, but Roberts is obviously a favourite to, to win that one and you know potentially the tournament between him and, him and Elliot. Also watching on and giving his opinion on who would take the crown was Adam Hassan, who decided to turn pundit following his early withdrawal. I would say Elliot is my favourite, but only because there's not a lot of room for Sai to move around on. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for that, Adam. Simon Roberts then booked his place in the final four, setting up a clash with Searle. 
the final last eight match saw Ed Ellis taking on Ashley Neves and clearly buoyed on by his earlier camera appearance, Hassan continued his punditry work. Ashley Neves is currently one set up about to go three two down. One set up but about to go three two down. Positive uh, down. And there it is, there's the three two down that he was after. Ellis clinched his place in the semis with this one of the shots of the match. He will now take on Elliot Mould and admits he doesn't have the best of records against the world number one. I don't feel like I've really uh, played a game that's worried him in the past. So uh, I think I'm going to have the attitude of trying to get the first big strike in and see how it, uh, see how it ends up. So as we entered the business end of the Sang Young Masters, the semi-final draw pitted world number one Elliot Mould against the gritty Ed Ellis and the former world number one Simon Roberts against Stuart Searle. Make sure you join us in part two for the conclusion here in Sirencester. It's all set to be quite a finale.